Good day everyone! I am Sir Robby and together we will learn the word of the future robotics. Did you know that here in Educational Technology Unit, robotics is a priority to make every Filipino learners and teachers competent and meet the demands of the future global scene? Where in teachers, students, and parents who wanted to learn robotics is just a click away for free. Robotics is an interdisciplinary field which integrates computer science and engineering. It involves design, construction, operation, and use of robots to assist human activities. Are you ready for this transformation? Soon in ICTS Educational Technology Unit, come and join us and love the future para sa bata, para sa bayan, at para sa guro. Sulong Edukalidad! Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pamumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del P. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Hello learners! Happy Choose English Day! I am Tutor Jamie and I will be guiding and sharing knowledge on creative nonfiction. So get ready as we amplify the levels of our imagination and use it in writing literary pieces in our most creative way. We are almost done with our semester as we move to week 6 of creative nonfiction. Last week, we created a draft of our literary piece and started with using an outline. I also had the opportunity to show you an introduction of my personal essay, The Under the Knife in a Pandemic, which is still in the works and I am aiming to have it done before this quarter ends. Sana matapos ko siya. So I can share it here. I hope I was able to help you with starting your own writing project. And as of today's Itulai online tutorial, with the assumption that we are done with our draft, we are going to check our work by evaluating it in terms of its content and structure to see if we are doing well and if we need to improve on some details. This in mind, so our lesson would be uh, quarter three, lesson six, evaluating one's draft. So, this in mind, let me. Uh, read out to you our objective for this session, which is uh, that we are expected to evaluate one's draft considering the clarity of idea, appropriateness of choice of literary element, appropriate use of the element, and effective combination of the idea and the chosen literary element. And by the way, before I uh, go further, uh, shout out to all the faculty and students of both junior and senior high school of Caloocan City Business High School in Caloocan, headed by our OIC principal, Dr. Ivy Perez. To my uh, English department uh, uh, family, especially uh, my uh, head, my department head, Sir Rudy Putong, hello po, sir. Please stay safe sa ating lahat. Ayan. So, Let's go through our session this afternoon. So our learning task is, for the first learning task that uh, we will be doing today, we are going to use a concept map and uh, 
with that concept map, we are going to identify the words or ideas that comes into our mind when, uh, and we associate it with the evaluating of a literary piece. So what are the things that comes to our mind when we talk about or when we hear the term evaluating or evaluating a literary piece? You know, like we, uh, if we may uh, relate it to or uh, refer it to something else uh, to make it uh, more understandable, evaluating would mean like grading or like analyzing or assessing a literary piece. So what are those uh, words that you have? So good afternoon po. Shout out sa mga kasama ko ngayon uh, tuning in to this live session of Itolay. Hello po, watching from Pilar District, uh, Pilar Kamot, uh, Kamote Cebu. Ayan. Hello po sa inyong lahat, both learners and teachers. Ayan. Okay. So, you may have your idea on some words. No, gagamit tayo ng concept map. I have here one. I have prepared one here. But before I show you what I had in mind, uh, you may want to comment your uh, ideas or the words that you might want to relate or you may have relate related to evaluating a literary piece. Ano ba pumapasok sa isip natin pag narinig natin evaluating a literary piece? Most of the time, especially in English language, um, we tend to like uh, be intimidated eh, with some of the terms. Eh. Hindi natin alam without even thinking na uh, these are like simple things lang na just used in another term. So, any idea that uh, you may want to share, please comment on the comment box. Shout out to Rufino A. Cruz Memorial Elementary School by uh, Sir Glenn Jorge Silvino. Hello po. Ayan. Okay. So go ahead and comment your ideas. Uh, I will be reading them later. Basta hindi lang. Kasi minsan mabilis. So I cannot catch up. So let's uh, see what I have here. So when well, when I hear evaluating a literary piece, these are the things that come into my mind. So is the idea of the plot clearly presented? So this is one question that comes into mind when we try to evaluate a literary piece. Naiintindihan ko ba siya? Is the idea clear? Is it uh, presented uh, clearly? No. So those are the things. Also, we can uh, put this here. Were the elements of the genre used appropriately or utilized? No. So the elements or the literary elements of the genre. For example, if we have, if we are reviewing or evaluating like a poem, no, are the elements of a poem you uh uh used properly? Is it effective in uh, creating the poem? No, in general. And then we can also have this, or you may also have this idea, was the combination of the ideas and the literary devices effective? So when if we have the ideas and then the devices, the literary devices, as well as the elements put together, is the combination uh, effective? Does it help the understanding of the literary piece? Does it help the... Uh, the author uh, bring out the message that is uh, um, uh, lurking around the story or the essay or the narrative. Yan po. Okay? So you may also have different ideas as well. So let's try another concept map that we may have. So basically evaluating a literary piece we also need to look at the mechanics so uh, the mechanics of how it was written no so pag uh, pag sinabi naman natin mechanics if we talk about mechanics we are actually talking about one would be the written grammar but also uh, the cap the proper capitalization of uh, the sentence or the use of the proper punctuation with uh, did we use proper punctuation with each of our statements or our sentences? Those are what we call mechanics. Are the are the words that should be capitalized or should begin with a capitalized letter are uh, done properly? No? So 
those are the things that we should look at when we are talking about mechanics and written grammar. So, marami yan. Um, that's why I mentioned earlier that uh, we are going to evaluate a literary piece, particularly our own draft, yung ginawa natin last time, uh, our own draft, so that we can see if there are areas that we need to improve on. Because that's what evaluation or what evaluating really aims to do, to see if there are things that we need to improve on or uh, if the uh, literary piece or something that we are evaluating is good to go or pwede na siyang i-publish or i-share to, uh, to uh, uh, everyone. Yeah. So let's see here. I have prepared uh, a drill uh, to let us uh, review on some of the most uh, common errors in written grammar. Let me just uh, clarify, you know, um, written grammar is actually different from uh, spoken grammar. Of course, from the terms alone, written, sinsulat. Uh, spoken, when you read and you read it out loud, out loud you are actually speaking it. You are uh, applying what, for example, you are applying what the period functions for so when you see a sentence that has a period you'll have to uh you'll have to read it or you have to uh uh properly uh speak of it uh as para saan ba ang period so you have to stop you have to have a full stop there so something like that no so the, uh that's why sometimes i disagree with some of what i hear na uh we should not be looking into uh we should not put so much focus with the punctuations and the capitalization uh when we are uh, evaluating the works especially of the learners of our students i feel that we should we should really emphasize on the written grammar or on the mechanics because the iba ang written iba ang spoken it's more uh it's there is a is, there is stricter um, ruling when it comes to written and uh, medyo flexible when it comes to spoken grammar. And we are concentrating now on written grammar. Yeah. Okay. There. So, so meron ako dito mga common uh, mga statements and then uh, what you're going to do or what we are going to do is that uh, we examine each sentence and then we write fix or we comment fix, F-I-X, if there is a need uh, for the sentence to be fixed. And then we type in no fix, N-O-F-I-X. No? If there is nothing wrong with the sentence or hindi na siya kailangang ayusin. No? I uh, hope that our uh, co-teachers, our colleagues would help me with this one. I would really love to see your comments on what you on explanations that you might have no to have this uh, session uh, uh more interesting yeah i would really like to hear from you so fix or no fix let's try this one the first is his your welcome has so much sincerity in it that my words of gratitude were not enough Again, his your welcome has so much sincerity in it that my words of gratitude were not enough. So is this a fix or a no fix? Do you think that we need to fix something in this statement or it's good to go? Type in your answers. Watching from Binkuli National High School, Negros Occidental. Hello po, Wim Wim. Ayan. Fix. May Shine Jed Domingo said fix. May nagsabi rin na Odia Dem T. Rosica, Rosy Ram said fix. A lot of you actually answered fix. Fix, fix. Ayan. Tignan muna natin. Let us try to see if meron siyang dapat ayusin. I hope my guess is uh, uh, as good as yours. No? So this is the fix that we need to work on. And yes, you are right. It's fix. No? So you have to fix this one. Okay. Can I uh, have 
anyone from uh, our viewers to ex to at least explain babasayan ko na lang why we need to fix this most of the time we have uh, even ako as a teacher i sometimes have this error i sometimes have this error uh, because siguro na rin because of uh, it sounds like eh, right no so here uh, we should change this with your the the one that is a contraction of you are yes ma'am Rosaline Villanueva thank you dapat you are yan because uh the statement you're welcome should be with the contraction of you and are which is your ayan nakalagay sa tabi ng fix ito ayan dapat you are yan hindi yan ito. kasi this your the y o u r is a pronoun no it's a possessive pronoun Ayan. So, your. So, dapat your. So, we should wet, watch out for this error kasi very common to. Very common. Kasi it sounds like eh. Sometimes nagiging tampulan na ng, uh, ng bashing sa, uh, sa social media. But uh, uh, we always have room for improvement. Ayan. So, tatandaan natin, your welcome should be with you are welcome. And if we'd like to contract it, we just have to place an apostrophe after you and then add RE. Ayan. So, good. Thank you. Thank you. Ayan. Next. Luna spends sleepless nights reviewing all her lessons, aiming for the highest score in the exam. Luna spends sleepless nights reviewing all her lessons, aiming for the highest score in the exam. So is this a fix or a no fix? Let me give you a, a, a clue. This has something to do with the modifier, with modifiers. Ito ang, ito ang issue niya. Is it in the correct, uh, correct uh, place? Oh, nilagyan ko ng ganyan. I actually gave out the answer already. This is actually a fix. There, fix to. You have to fix this. So anyone who would like to uh, share the, their idea how to fix this statement or this sentence. The aiming for the highest score in the exam. Saan natin dapat to ilagay? Yeah, and everyone is everyone I see now are actually answering fix. They are correct. Absolutely correct. Okay. So, um for for the for uh, our learners and our uh, of course the teachers you would agree with me when I say that our modifiers should always be closest to the thing or to the name or to something that it modifies. Kasi dito, aiming for the highest score in the exam, it's actually um, confusing. Sino ba yung nag aim for the highest score in the exam? Yung her lessons ba? Or si Luna? There. So, this modifier, this statement that uh, actually modifies Luna, it's Luna who is aiming for the highest score in the exam, not all her lessons. Uh, lessons cannot aim actually no so practically we actually have two uh possible fix fixes for this one the first one is to aiming for the highest score in the exam then comma and then luna so i put an ellipsis there para to represent the rest of the sentence so aiming for the highest score in the exam is uh, describing Luna. It's Luna who is aiming for the highest score, not the lesson. So this, in this uh, error, uh, we uh, the modifier is misplaced. It should be at the it should be at the uh, nearest Luna. Okay. Ayan. So another way of fixing the sentence or fixing the statement is when we put Luna, comma, and then aiming for the highest score in the exam, and then comma, using it as an appositive. No? So we all know what an appositive is. It's defining. It's something that we can take out of the sentence without uh, changing the sentence's uh, 
uh, idea no or message so aiming for the highest score in the exam is still modifying luna ayan so those are the two possible fixes that we can have so watch out in kaya dyan, nakakalito din yan especially if uh, you are your mind is really racing with what you are writing madalas natin commit yan then we have she loves reading she can fin a library in a single day. Yeah. Should we fix this or should uh, should we not fix it? Or is this no fix? What do you think? Mm. She loves reading. She can finish a library in a single day. Okay, so I think may sumagot na nang fix si Shaina Domingo. May si Felix said fix din. Okay, so let's find mo now what is, ano. So I encircled the whole sentence because we all, the whole sentence has to be uh, fixed, no? Si Wyatt said not fix. Bakit kaya? I think uh, you have to read the statement carefully, no? Uh, really, uh do a uh, uh, intentive be attentive with the reading okay yeah so we have to fix this this is actually a fix and uh one way to fix it is that uh to this the the error etong error na to let me go back to that slide the error is actually a, an error or uh, is a run on an error on run on no, a run on sentence because we have two independent sentences or independent clauses i mean and then we put it into just one st uh, sentence that's a run on dire derecho walang tigil no correct christian paul soriano it lacks punctuation and we have to separate the two independent clauses no and how do we do that first we can do two sentences we separate them as two sentences we punctuate she loves reading no and then we also punctu uh, punctuate she can finish a library in a single day or we can use a semicolon which uh, is used to separate two independent clauses Rusi Villanueva mentioned Rusiline Villanueva mentioned use conjunctions yes that's also a good way of uh, fixing that statement conjunction. So, what conjunctions do you think we should use? What conjunction? I think we can use a coordinating conjunction here, or we can also use a, a, a subordinating conjunction, right? So she loves reading, so like it's an additional we can, uh, and she can finish a library in a single day. There. Okay? So those are the things that we can do to fix the sentence. And then we have this. John said, without emotion, I'll see you later. This is very useful, and we also we really need to uh, remember this error. Because uh, most of the time we would be writing like dialogues in our stories. Uh, yun na naman, sinabi ko na naman yung sagot. So we go ahead. I uh, This lacks a punctuation, a comma. Okay? And so this is a fix. So we need to fix this. Um, there are, I think there are a lot, I, I actually saw like 15 rules in using a comma. No? So kung makikita nyo marami pa yun. So here, there are two um, parts here. So there is a dialogue, there is a quotation, a direct dialogue or direct quotation here. So it's something that John uh, literally said. No, I'll see you later. So we have to separate this. And in written grammar, we have to put a comma after the first, uh, the first statement. John said without emotion, comma, I'll see you later. Because we have to separate the... Uh, the quotation, the quoted statement with the uh, the description, the, like who said it. Pag naman inuna natin yung quotation, 
the quotation the the comma should be inside the quotation and then we go ahead with the rest of the statement so there's a lot of rules there eh? and uh if isa isa natin kulang tayo sa oras okay next how about this one tina has trimmed down her goals from 10 to just 3 sorry 3 getting a job Save 100,000 pesos and pursue her trouble vlog. Yeah, Christian, Christian Paul Soriano mentioned, yes, ma'am, it is also in the rules of using quotation mark. Yes. Thank you, Christian. Okay, so what uh, this is, what? Do we need to fix this? Is there something that we need to fix in this statement or is this good? So Marie Ferrer's mentioned no fix. Are you sure? Would you like to look at it again? Would you like to see, uh, to read it again? Christian Paul Soriano also said no fix. So yeah, tignan natin. No fix. Sunshine Agapito Garcia said fix let's see the answer so tignan muna natin kung saan natin siya ipifix eto getting so this is fix we need to uh, fix this one ayan may nagsabi na uh, John IV Taluban said get yung getting should be changed to get okay correct so this is actually uh, an error committed with parallelism. So when we say parallelism, all the structures used should be the same, parallel. Parang if you if you think about the uh, lines that are parallel, pareho sila nang uh, hindi sila nag hindi sila nag inter intersect, hindi sila nagtatama, hindi sila nagsasalubong. They are parallel. So uh, that is what is committed in that uh, statement. Kasi sabi dito, getting this is um, uh, gerund, no? getting, tapos yung sumunod na verb, save, is in the uh, uh, present tense na, plural present, and then ito plural present din. No? So, dapat pare-pareho yan. There should be, uh, they should have the same structure or same form of the verb. Okay? So, how do we fix that? By changing getting to just get. Ayan. So, thank you, Christian, for uh, accepting the correction. Ayan. So, alam nyo, even teachers, madalas nagkakamali dito so you don't have to worry. The most important thing is that we accept our faults and we do something about it. Ayan. Okay, so dapat parallel lagi. Get, get a job, save 100,000 pesos, and pursue her travel book. So, travel vlog. Yeah. About this one. Ni pa ako tapos. <laughs> is this a fix or no fix? This is just an example of the sentence, ha? Hindi pa po ako tapos. Ayan. Do you think this is a fix? Or no fix? This is a direct quotation. Uh a direct a, a dialogue or a statement it's in inside quotation marks so as you could this is actually no fix ayan thank you miss jenny kalian soriano yeah so this is a no fix why when you are uh, when you are uh, another uh, rule in comma in using a comma um when you are including uh, a a person directly in your dialogue or in your quotation you should put you should separate it with the rest of the sentence with a comma like for example no comma uh yung no natin no uh, comma and then john you are wrong something like that so you have to put a comma and separate to separate the names of the person you are directly talking to or addressing to yeah no fix yet how about this one? Pareho lang yun yung kanina. So, good job, learners. 
it's a no fix na yan, of course because you all do you all did a good job okay now we move forward no thank you very much for those who have partic uh, participated so we move forward i have this question lagi so why do we need to evaluate or examine our own work? It's ours anyway, diba? It's ours anyway. We want it the way it is. Poetic license and all. Ganyan, diba? Okay. I have an answer for you, a simple answer. We evaluate to improve. The reason why we evaluate is for us to examine if our work is, uh, if we are doing it well. If we have... Uh, if we have to work on something and improve on some details before we move. Gusto nyo ba ka iba pa ang mag-correct sa inyo? Diba? After you have already, like, for example, published your work. Diba? Sa atin pa lang, we have to uh, make sure that, we, that it's already clean. Okay? Next, we have, so according to Barry Davenport in his article of 15 common grammar mistakes that kill your writing credibility, bigat, diba? We have 15 common grammar mistakes that literally kill your writing credibility. These are the reasons that he has mentioned <coughs> in his article. You can find this article on uh, www.authority.pub and then common grammar mistakes. Okay. These are the reasons why we need to avoid pro poor grammar and, of course, poor um, mechanics, especially if it's writing, if it's a writing project. <clears throat> because poor grammar may, one, mean that the writer is not serious with the craft. So if we pass something that is not that has a lot of errors, it may feel that we are not serious with what we have submitted that we just submitted it for the sake of submission, which is really uh, saddening, especially in the part of uh, teachers. Alam na mga teachers yan. Parang most of the time, um, we really are saddened. Speaking for myself din po, we, we really are saddened when our learners would submit something na basta lang mema, mema ipasa, no? Kasi hindi inayos. There. So another reason to avoid poor grammar or what what makes what cause what, what's the effect of a poor grammar is that it causes distraction among readers. Would you like your readers to focus on the poor grammar that you have on your writ, uh, writing project instead of the message? So nahihinder niya kasi yon. That's why we have to work on our grammar. Not really being to uh, to uh, uh, work out on uh, the grammar. At least do the basic. Okay? There. And there are also four aspects that we should consider in evaluation, uh, evaluating our draft. So the first one is the clarity of the idea presented. So when we speak of clarity of idea of the sentence, again, meron akong questions dito. Again, as I've mentioned before, Hindi po yaan kailangan yung tanungin. Of course, you can uh, just choose something that you feel um, most comfortable with. So when we speak of clarity of idea presented, so we, we might want to ponder on these points. First, it is hard to capture a reader's attention much more to keep it. Nairapan na nga tayo mag-capture ng, at ng attention ng ating reader. Uh, how much more keeping it? o mamanatili silang uh, nakatutok doon sa ating story. Getting the reader's attention is different from keeping it. So, different, is it, it is different, uh, different talks yung getting your reader's attention. Okay, good, you already have their attention. But, keeping their attention fixed at your right, uh, written literary piece or your literary piece is also different you still have to work on that. Ang aim natin lagi is for the reader to read from the first paragraph up to the last. If, if you have an uh, unclear idea, paano na, di ba? Also, we have to put ourselves in the reader's shoes. Would you want to read a piece 
uh, a literary piece with unclear ideas. Diba ayaw din, minsan tatama rin din tayo. So we also have to think about that and consider. So here are the questions that we might want to uh, use when we are evaluating our draft when it comes to clarity of the idea presented. First, were the information accurate and based on facts? Remember, we are doing nonfiction. Although it's creative, it still has to be based on facts. Second, were the ideas presented arranged in chronological order considering the type of nonfiction used? So especially if we are doing a narrative, is the chronological order of the events clear or medyo naguguluhan ka? If on your part, naguguluhan ka doon sa pagkakakwento mo, how much more the one who will who is going to read your work, right? So always consider that. Next is uh, the other two questions that I have here also on clarity of the idea presented are where the ideas used make the readers understand the flow of the piece. Alas pareho lang din nung kanina sa chronological order. And then were the ideas presented consistent in providing the purpose of the piece? So if the purpose of your piece is to uh, inform your uh, readers about uh, the importance, for example, the, ex the importance of health, Health nowadays so it has to be uh, on that uh, on that theme on that way lang kung mag mag uh, mag mag side ka muna mag uh, mag segue ka on other on other ideas just make sure that you go back to the sole idea that you have otherwise you might end you might your readers might end up uh, losing attention or losing interest in what you have written okay Next, another uh, aspect to consider is the appro uh, appropriate choice of literary elements. So when we speak of re uh, appropriate choice of literary el elements, think about this. Remember the literary elements. These are what makes up a literary piece. So depending on the genre used, like a narrative or a story, we have uh, the elements that we have there are the plot, characterization, setting, theme, tone, mood. Did you use it appropriately? If you are uh, working on a poem, did you use the the, the elements of that poem no? uh, properly? So the, here are the questions that you may also want to ponder on. How and why did the author choose the literary elements? So if the purpose of the author wants to narrate what had happened to him on that single event of his life, he may want to choose a memoir or writing a memoir. So did it work? Uh, that would be, uh, in this question, it would uh, actually be talking about the author's purpose. No? And then what was the genre used by the author? Did he use a narrative? This, did he use a memoir? Did he publish or write about his diary? His per, did he uh, work on a personal essay or did you work on a personal essay? Next is, were the chosen elements appropriate for uh, to the genre used by the author? Is it appropriate? Uh, if you work on a personal essay, did you follow the basic structure of an essay that you have a, a, an introduction, you have your body, and then you have your conclusion? There. Another aspect would be appropriate use of element. So again, halos, uh, this coincides with number two. How was the structure of the elements used in the text? How was it used? No, um, were the devices properly used uh, uh, along with the with the elements? How did the literary elements affect the emotions of the readers? Is there any effect in that manner? So let's say you decided to work on a narrative fiction, nonfiction, and present it in your memoir. Basically, it is an event. A memoir is an event in your life that you decide to focus the spotlight on. So what are the elements that you can use? Let's say you choose to write it in omniscient point of view. No, so do you have a you have a narrator. So you write your memoir and set a narrator to tell a story. Is that effective? You have a memoir, but then you let a narrator uh, talk about or, or uh, lead the readers into reading. Or are you not leaning away from the genre in the first place? Baka nagiging biographical na yung genre mo but you this but you actually mentioned that you uh, that's that it's a memoir no 
Are you, um, maybe if you tell your memoir in the first person, do you think it would be better? So those are the considerations you may want to ask. So these are all other questions that uh, you can consider when you are evaluating your work with the appropriate use of element. Why does the narrator choose certain language, report details that he, she does, reveal the characters in the manner that he or she does, and all others? Yeah. Why is the work set during a certain era? or season of time, of day? Why did he write something like that now that it's in? we are in a pandemic? Will it help the situation? Will it help us in that situation, rather? Okay. And then effective combination of ideas and the chosen element. Did the reader understand the flow of the piece because of the literary elements used? So when there is the combination of the idea and the element or the genre, did it work? Or uh, baka pwedeng iban, ibang genre yung gamitin mo, ibang type ang gamitin mo. Okay? And did the combination of ideas and literary elements help the readers to go along and be hooked with the flow of the piece? Did you keep the attention of the reader? If not, then maybe we need to work on some improvements on that detail. On your uh, module, uh, I saw this... Um, Leaving the comfort zone behind, learning ta uh, behind, which is a learning task number six on the pivot module. Uh, I think we don't have much time. So we can go back with this one. We can have this as our uh, review next week. Po. Okay. So these are the strong points and the weak points of that learning task or of that essay. Now, let me leave you with this quotation. There is no rule on how to write. Sometimes it comes easy. Uh, it comes easily and perfectly. Sana yun? And sometimes it's like drilling rock and then blasting it out with charges. With, with charges. Uh, this is by Ernest uh, Hemingway. He is an American uh, novelist, a short story writer, journalist, and sportsman. Writing is subjective. We write our own versions of our stories. We interpret it differently considering the di different orientations we have in our lives. But never ignore rooms for improvement because it is one of the reasons why we keep on going. So see, uh, with that, we'll see you again next week here on Ito Like Creative Nonfiction. God bless and stay safe. Sigurado ako na marami ka na namang natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Ito Live free online tutorial session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Ito Live tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine social media accounts. Paalam!